Well, just another really quick video update. I'm having some trouble with uh, my instruments PCs. The XP wants to update on uh, two out of three of them tonight, so I'll see if I can get through the rest without uh, without this uh, crashing out on the third one. But uh, anyway, got FSX running in the background there. I just really wanted to take a spin through some software that I've been itching to have for months and months and months, um, long before actually I even decided to build the sim. And that is the, I believe it's pronounced, Avlasoft Electronic Flight Bag. I've discussed this with uh, other friends of mine, and uh, a friend of mine, Randy, has some videos on YouTube of it running on the iPad. But uh, this software, you just need to go out and get it. I have it running on uh, on these touchscreen monitors, which are the identical one used in the YouTube video on the 737 video. Uh, if you search Avlasoft, you'll uh, you'll find it. It's uh, the number one hit. Anyway, uh, after some setting up, I've got the files sharing across the network with that PC. Uh, me being not so good at Windows 7 networking didn't realize that I need to not only enable sharing but I have to set up securities on all the folders. But once I figured that out, no problem. Anyway, uh, I've got the aircraft sitting uh, at the edge of the runway at uh, KPDX and this is just the overview of that. Um, you can not have it centered to the aircraft where I can actually pan around and do all kinds of things. Uh, if you zoom right out, now this is all included in the Avlasoft software. Uh, beautiful ground charts. I'll go back to centered on the aircraft, zoom in. You can taxi so easy because taxiways are all labeled. Um, to my knowledge, most of the airports are, are complete. Uh, I'm not even going to touch on half of what this software is capable of because truthfully I haven't explored a good portion of it. Anyway, um, top corner, it's going to be, this is a poor camera, I'm sorry, uh, ATIS frequency is 120.62. This is how cool this software is. Right now I have uh, 120.60 tuned in in the standby for COM1. I'll switch that to 120.62 in the standby. And note, the ATIS frequency is now blue. It's telling me that I have that tuned in standby. I'll swap that to active. And it is now green on the EFB. And the ATIS is broadcasting. This is just one of the hundreds of features to this software. I, I won't even begin to go over them all. I have the route set up from KPDX to uh, KSEA, which is Seattle. Uh, it's kind of a favorite little route of mine. It's a good little jump, nice and easy and quick. Um, we can go through our clearance. These are our frequencies, airport, terminal, and then there's VFR and stuff lift, listed too. It's laid out in a logical flow of flight. So if we go to our departure, it will show us departure information. Uh, our en route, we will see the basics of the route, which is charted. There's a huge amount of information, not just nav aids and everything else that are on there. there there's a lot going on in the background. Anyway, uh, if I go back to the ground, we're centered on the aircraft and I'll uh, get it in flight and uh, show you the difference. Okay, here I've got the aircraft in the air. Um, it's just a direct to GPS route to uh, Seattle. So, again, sorry for the quality on this, but uh, that's all we've got to work with. So here we are en route and there's just too many options to go over with all of this. If I, I can zoom in, zoom out, all the good stuff, we can go to a night view, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, there's lots of other silly options, um, and a bunch that are just so in-depth, it's, it's quite incredible. 
this top bar allows me to toggle what I want to see on the chart. I'm going to try and do this. If I want to see the NDBs all shown in the area, looks like I have to do a recal on the, the monitor, I can see all the NDBs. Um, if I want to see all the airports, I can activate all the airports. We can also, in the configuration, you can do all kinds of stuff with the details of those, but uh, it's turned up right now. Uh, as for the traffic is the really cool thing. If I take traffic off the screen, it's pretty, pretty bland. Enable the traffic and all the purple targets, which may not be showing up very well in the video, are the, uh, are the aircraft name, altitude, speed, type of aircraft. And this also works in multiplayer. This thing is, uh, quite incredible on its uh, interfacing capability. It does, uh, I haven't tested it yet, but it's supposed to work over VATSIM, uh, and the VATSIM capabilities are just another reason that I just really wanted it. You can enable all sorts of location fixes and just make the screen as busy as you want. Anyway, this is the on route version. Um, it's in a logical order. You start on ground, you move to departure, you move to en route, arrival, approach, and then back to ground at destination. There is tons of information available. This is the arrival page, it gives me my frequencies. Uh, you can go in and enable or disable everything as you wish. Approaches. It will actually plot the approach. Uh, that you've selected. Now in this case I don't have uh, an approach programmed in, it's just a direct to um, GPS route, no, uh, no SID star, no nothing. And then back to Seattle ground, this is the airport that uh, I'll be landing at. Uber valuable. If you're flying online to an airport you haven't been to before, <clears throat> Uh, we all know how much fun taxiways are, especially at night in an unfamiliar airport. Here they are, mapped out, included in the software. This little tidbit over here is basically a mini CDU of sorts, or a mini FMC. It gives me my distance to my top of descent, which is just a rough calculation, time, uh, next waypoint, destination distance, time, ETA ground speed currently, uh, if I wanted to descend now, if I was given ATC and I had to get down, well I could do it. Uh, if I wanted to set my current altitude as my cruise altitude, I just hit adjust cruise altitude and that will uh, recompute everything for this is my current cruising. Um, back to en route on here, just super cool for situational awareness, charts on demand, everything uh, comes with basic Navigraph data. And the thing is on sale right now for 20% off I believe. I think I paid 69 bucks US and uh, this is the biggest bang for my buck that I have ever seen in software and I've wanted to purchase it since uh, a long time ago and uh, finally got around to it thanks to Randy for pushing me to, to just get it done. That's why I bought these touchscreen monitors which uh, as a side note the software gets along very very well on them. I haven't yet uh, messed around with the library portion. You can pull up PDFs, uh, HTML files from within the program so you can pull up your own charts instead of the uh, rendered on demand versions. I'm just itching to play with this. This is going to make flying, especially online, so much easier. It's At minimum, you have the basics available at all times. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to share. By the way, I'm not paid by the company at all. I just, I knew long before I bought it that I was going to be pretty happy with it. And uh, kudos to them for providing. Out of memory on the SD. <laughs> Story of my life. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the uh, the build update. Again, uh, 
thank you to, to Avisoft for providing this product and I'm just itching to get flying. So it's back to building for a little bit. Uh, the sim's coming along. Once I get the Jet 45 display issue sorted out, uh, Jason Height is, is working on it to my knowledge, so I'm going to be pretty pleased about that once I can get those even looking a little better. Uh, Ron is uh, working on my split caps for these switches in here. Uh, they're dual LEDs, including this one, so uh, I had to send them to him to be CNC machined, and then I can put the dual LEDs in and get the rest of the AMLs in. I still need to get a whole bunch more of the AML51 caps so I can mount my lenses on these switches, but uh, yeah, it's coming together. I'm hoping uh, flyable very soon. I got uh, uh, UPS running now for uh, backup power supply. It's a real pain if there's a power outage or something that everything sort of crashes out. I really don't want all the software to be damaged. Back here, everything's back to a real mess again. I had to get an Ethernet switch. Uh, I ran out of ports on my router. It only has four. I've got five PCs running off of it right now, and probably at least one more needing hardwire. And not to mention the, my other PO Keys card for the uh, rest of the rotary encoders requires Ethernet. Vince is providing me with the EFIS panels to go here. That will be the last major hurdle for flight controls I need to fly this thing on a regular basis. So it'll be a matter of uh, getting some interfacing done. And uh, yeah, hopefully everything keeps rolling along. I'm going to run it a little lower on time to devote to it in the near future, but oh well, such is the nature of life. Thanks for watching.